Hey, it's Brandon from Pixel Planet Studios. Today we're gonna to talk about Dynamic Link from Premiere Pro to Adobe After Effects. Let's get started. So our friend Norm asked if we can do a video on Dynamic Linking. So we're gonna go over some of the pros and cons and how I use it in my daily workflow. Now Adobe offers dynamic linking between a few of the apps in the Creative Cloud, but we're gonna focus on these two programs. One of my favorite features, and maybe one of the reasons I really like to stick with Premiere to edit, as opposed to an increasingly competitive, and in some cases superior and quicker DaVinci Resolve, is the ability to move clips right from my editor into my motion graphics software. First, you need to make sure that After Effects and Premiere Pro are the same version. We'll look at the opening shot from this pixel bite and you'll see that I have one After Effects pillow and this Jurassic Park pillow that we've turned backwards. As we were talking about doing this pixel bite, we said, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have both an After Effects and a Premiere pillow? So of course, this is a job for After Effects. We also shot the After Effects pillow on the other side as a reference, as well as a clean plate. Unfortunately, you see one of our lights died by the time we did this, so it required one extra step, which you'll see in a little bit. Okay, we'll start by throwing these two clips into After Effects. So we'll right click and hit replace with After Effects composition. And you'll see that our new comp automatically has the correct frame size and frame rate based on our sequence settings in Premiere and duration based on the clips that we've dynamically linked. Okay, I'm going to do some visual effects work. If you want to skip this tutorial, you can jump ahead to the nine minute and 15 second mark. I'll start by drawing a mask around the armrest, pillow, and top of the couch. And we wanna make sure that we cover the old shadow up. And I'll freeze frame this on the first frame since uh, you can see that I move. Then I'm going to add a curves adjustment and I could come over here to the effects and presets window, but I'm going to use FX console to quickly add effects today and I'm going to bring down the greens and the reds a bit, as well as I'll darken up this footage a little bit. We just wanna match this as best we can. Then I'm going to use our mask feather tool to feather out the areas on the couch while leaving hard edges when it meets the background. Now you'll see our old pillow sticking out a bit. And normally we would have had a clean plate, but our clean plate was messed up by that light dine. So what I did was export a single frame and then I did a quick Photoshop job on that to mask the rest of the green pillow out. And so I'll drop this in and I'll mask out the area that I'll be using. And then I'll feather that mask a little bit. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere and we have two After Effects pillows. So next you'll see I have an After Effects logo here and a Premiere Pro logo. And I'm going to drop the After Effects logo in because I want to use it for placement. So I'll scale it down and roughly position it. And then I'm going to add a mesh warp effect and I'll make it two by two. And then I'm going to just try to match the corners and how it curves to the pillow the best I can. And I'll bring down the opacity to 50% to see what's going on here. And then I'll bring it back up to 100%. So now I'll replace it with our Premiere Pro logo. And to do this on Windows, I hold the Alt key and drag it and replace it. And that's it, we're done. No, I'm kidding. We're gonna try to color match it to the original pillow. So I'm going to add a change to color effect and select the pink, and then I'll turn the layer off and select the light purple of the real pillow. And then I'll change it to hue, lightness, and saturation and transforming to color. And I'll bring the hue down really low, just above zero to 0.1. And then I'll add a second change to color effect and I'll select the purple in the middle of the Premiere logo. And I'll turn the layer off and I'll select this bluish purple right in the middle from the footage. And then I'll change it to hue and saturation. And then I will decrease this hue amount here just a little bit. Now to figure out these settings, I did need to mess around with the settings of each effect. I don't just magically know these numbers, but um, these are the values that I found that worked right for me. And while there are more traditional uh, color correction effects to try to match these colors, um, when I'm in a pinch and I need a really quick solution, which we're trying to do with this tutorial, I found that uh, these change to color effects are really, really powerful. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw a mask around our logo and you see it's a little funky because of the mesh warp effect. But we'll adjust this mask a little bit to isolate our logo and then we'll feather this pretty significantly. Now it looks a little bit dark, so we'll 
lighten it up a little bit with a curves adjustment. And you'll see in the original footage, there's a shadow near the bottom of it. So we'll put on a curves adjustment, darken it up and bring down the highlights. And then we'll add a mask to that region and make that effect only use that mask. And we'll feather it pretty significantly. Let's segue to our sponsor, Empower Customs. We have a sponsor? Just read the teleprompter. You may know that one of our favorite organizations is Empower Sports. Empower Sports exists to enrich the lives of athletes of diverse challenges through sports and exercise. And they've launched a sister company which creates awesome custom apparel and provides job opportunities to athletes from their program. So I asked Tom if he would be able to turn this Jurassic Park logo into a shirt and this is what they came up with. They're located right here in Cleveland, but they ship nationwide for free. Tell them that Pixel Planet sent you and get 20% off your order through the end of the year. Link below. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Now I'm still seeing a bit of an edge, but if we try to push this out too far, because we feathered it so heavily, we start to see the real border from our logo file. So I'm going to pre-compose this logo and leave all of the attributes in this comp. And then I'll go into the comp we've just created. I will duplicate this logo, scale it up, draw a mask, and then I'll set it to subtract and feather it a healthy amount so that it blends. I'll also add a Gaussian blur on our first layer and set it to like 10, just so it's a little less sharp. And then I'll come back into our main comp and adjust our mask just so that it blends a little bit better. So actually these days, the After Effects and Premiere logos are the same colors, but we wanna make this Premiere logo look more like the old school colors that we started with. Because if I was going to buy a pillow, it probably would have those more recognizable colors. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and create a new mask outlining the entire pillow. And then I'll add one more change to color effect. And then I'll select the current edge for the from color. And for the to color, I'll select that pink edge from the classic Premiere logo. And then I'll bring the hue up to 12 and the softness to eight. And I think this result looks really good. So we're almost done. But if you solo my original footage, there's a shadow from my hand that goes in front of the pillow. So we're going to attempt to extract that shadow. I'll duplicate the footage and move it to the top of our composition. And I'm going to rename it to hand shadow. And then I'm going to delete these audio effects and I'm going to add a tint to make it black and white and a levels adjustment. Now I'm going to look for the part of the clip where the shadow from my hand appears and I'm going to bring the input white over significantly and you can see that picking up shadows on dark green pillow isn't ideal, but I'm going to turn the visibility of the layer off and I'm going to draw an outline of our premier pillow. Now I'll turn it back on and I'll adjust it so we mostly see the shadow from the hand. Then I'll bring in our mask feather tool and I'm going to feather it into the pillow while keeping the hard edges on the right side. Now we'll turn this to multiply blend mode and then add a Gaussian blur effect to soften this out and we'll bring the opacity down to 50%. And now we have a shadow that interacts with the pillow. And actually, let's jump back over to Premiere real quick. You can see this is updated and let's try to play it. Hey, it's Brandon from Pixel Planet Studios. Today, we're gonna to talk about Dynamic Link from Premiere Pro to Adobe After Effects. Let's okay, it actually plays really well without rendering. This is Dynamic Link in action, but we're about to do some final tweaks that will make this a bit bulkier. So we'll want to eventually render this. So let's jump back over to After Effects. Okay, so finally I'm going to select all of my CG layers. These are layers that don't have the same grain on them as the background plate. I'm gonna leave the shadow out from this because that can go over top of the grain work that we're going to do. I'll select the adjustment layer, Premiere Pro logo, pillow other side, and BG cleanup. I'll pre-compose this and call it layers for grain. I'll add a match grain effect. Then I'll drag this preview window over to the edge of our CG layers and I'll use our intro shot and we'll watch this. So it looks a little too intense and the grain looks a little bit too big. So I'm going to set the intensity to 0.5 and the size to 0.75. So I think this is in a really good spot. We could definitely tweak a few things, but overall I think this is looking really good and is gonna fit the purposes that we need. Now, once we rename our comp, which we would normally want to do to stay organized, the link between After Effects and Premiere will break. Hey guys, future Brandon here. So I thought when I renamed the comp in After Effects, it would no longer be linked in Premiere. In fact, it didn't break. So I added a piece of text in After Effects and it still appeared in Premiere. And then I restarted Premiere and everything was still linked. So I thought maybe Adobe had addressed this issue of renaming a comp and breaking the link between After Effects and Premiere. And then out of the blue, it did break. So 
while it might not break right away when you rename your comp in After Effects, it likely will break at some point. But like I said, this does get bulky, and while I didn't use any special plugins, if I had used any, any editor who didn't have those plugins wouldn't be able to open my edit in Premiere. And that goes for fonts as well. So for all these reasons, I like to render out my comps when I'm done. Okay, so here is a fake Christmas advertisement, and let's watch this. This Christmas, visit pixel-planet-studios.com for all your video production needs. So you can see that we have this footage that we'll want to do a screen replacement, and the editor let us know with some simple text layers how they kind of envision the graphics of this commercial. And we have a voiceover and the music track. And if I unhide this layer, you can see that we have the website that we want to put on the phone. And they've selected the part of the clip that they think works the best. So we'll select all of these layers, right click, and replace with After Effects Composition. And then in Premiere, I'll hit Control Z on Windows, or you could go to Edit Undo. Since I don't plan on taking advantage of the dynamic link features, I really would just want to start my comp off with all of these elements. And I'd like to have access to all of the elements still in Premiere. If you plan on keeping your dynamic links going, I do recommend that you duplicate your footage before sending it to After Effects, so that if you need to reference your original layers inside of Premiere, you still have them below the dynamic link clip that you've created. Okay, a couple final notes as we watch kind of a time lapse of me doing some motion graphics in this scene. Obviously, I'm a big fan of this feature and I love how quickly I can bring stuff in from Premiere into After Effects. Um, you know, let's say that we got a new voiceover because the client, of course, didn't want to use my voiceover. You can literally control C and control V into After Effects to paste it. It's so quick and easy. And you know, if we were doing this in DaVinci or Avid or another editor, it's not that we couldn't export the audio and bring it in to time things up, but when it's so easy, you're more likely to do it. And I find myself doing this all the time and it, it really helps with my motion graphics workflow to be able to time things up. So if I use footage that has warp stabilization on it, I have found that when I bring it into After Effects, After Effects wants to retrack it. So if I'm planning on doing motion graphics that I would export with Alpha to then sit on top of the footage in Premiere, I like to export that footage first out of Premiere because I don't trust that the two tracks that they come up with are going to be the same. And I've also found that secondary color correction effects sometimes don't translate very well into After Effects. One final thing that we should look at is this menu for Dynamic Link. We can replace with After Effects Composition, which we're familiar with. New After Effects Composition, which will create a fresh composition in After Effects that is linked in Premiere. And Import After Effects Composition, which you could use if you want to dynamically link a comp that you've already created. And I suppose you could use this to relink ones that you've renamed as well. So that's how I suggest using Dynamic Link. It can allow you to do what you'd otherwise have to do with an XML workflow in seconds. I think it's an absolutely amazing tool and has been critical in our motion graphics and visual effects workflow here at Pixel Planet. But I'd love to hear from you. Do you use Dynamic Link and how exactly do you use it? As always, please like and subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see on this channel. I hope this video is proof that we'll try to make those videos when you guys let us know. Shout out you, Norm.